H-E double hockey sticks. No, we cannot have that happening. That's Governor Ron DeSantis speaking at Gulf Coast State College in Panama City yesterday. Liz Ryan has more. The governor announced that Florida would be calling on the state legislature to expressly forbid centralized bank digital currencies for use in the state's commercial code. You're opening up a major can of worms and you're handing a central bank huge, huge amounts of power. He said what he considers the central bank digital currency to be all about. Surveilling Americans and controlling behavior of Americans. He gave examples of possible scenarios he believes could occur under a centralized bank. You go and buy gasoline. If you bought too much gasoline, they just won't allow you to use this to make a transaction. Who knows whether they would let you buy a firearm or things that they disapprove of. He expressed skepticism about going cashless. Cash is king. I mean, if you can hold it in your hand, you have power over that. The minute it's all digitized, somebody else is going to have control over that. And it's just a question of are they going to let you live your life? Are they going to decide to do things uh, to circumvent what you want to do? Local investor Greg Blase says the system isn't here yet. There is no central bank digital currency as it stands now. And that this effort is preemptive. If there's ever a central bank digital currency put forth by the federal government, we will not honor that currency here in the state of Florida. But added change is inevitable. At some point in time, you will not handle a dollar ever. But it's really a matter of who is controlling it. And so that's really what DeSantis is saying here is, hey, existing crypto people and digital currency people, I support the innovation that's currently going on in the marketplace. I do not support increasing the size and scope of government to deal with digital currency. For St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Liz Ryan. This local news is a service of your hometown Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. Florida's 7th District Senator talks about the state's new law that allows colleges to pay athletes. Travis Hudson sponsored the new legislation, which is based on previous efforts to pass the bill. Senator Mayfield was the original champion two years ago, and she did tremendous work getting us to where we are. I took it on this year. It was something that I was passionate about and believed in, being a former college athlete. I've seen firsthand where some athletes go through the system, they don't make it to the NFL, and they go home and they have regular day jobs, but obviously the colleges profit off them as they're playing. So it's only fair that student-athletes can profit off themselves. This new law gives student-athletes an incentive to attend college in Florida. That was the big fear where other states had this in place. We were losing some of those athletes to these other states. So we were just trying to even the playing field so that we could actually keep and retain these recruits as well. The measure also is designed to bolster financial literacy requirements for student-athletes. For St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Rich Petschke. Allowing local governments to adopt localized water quality protections keeps us from getting into a catastrophic situation. That's Matanzas Riverkeeper Jen Lumberg, who's lobbying against proposed legislation working its way through the State House and Senate because she says the measures are problematic. Senate Bill 1240, which is also House Bill 1197, would just straight up prohibit local governments from adopting any type of regulations relating to water quality, water quantity, pollution prevention, and wetlands protection. That is extremely concerning for a place like St. John's County, like Flagler County, where we still have such robust and intact wetlands. Lumbrick says the Matanzas is one of the last places in Florida where you can safely harvest and eat oysters from, but that could change. We are seeing pollution issues creeping up. We're starting to see issues with nutrient pollution, with fecal bacteria getting into the waterways. And so, It's kind of like a death by a thousand cut situation. We're not at a point where it's catastrophic yet, but the water quality is slowly getting worse and worse. St. Augustine Commissioner Barbara Blonder is also staunchly against the measures. We don't have a water supply problem yet, but the bigger we grow and the more sea level rises and we have saltwater intrusion, we will have a water supply problem. So why can't we get ahead of it? This bill prevents us from doing it. Neither of the measure's sponsors, State Senator Danny Burgess nor Rep. Randy Maggard, returned our requests for comment. With St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Amy Sherry. And now you're up to date with St. Augustine's local morning news. I'm Rich Carroll.